Good morning, Money.net viewers. It is Tuesday, September 26th. This is Steve Flanagan here with you. Let's talk FX. You can hit me up on a scout chat or on my Twitter handle, sflanagan1979, with any questions or follow-ups that you might have after we talk. As always, it's my intention to educate the viewers with some of the insights and tools that I have learned over my 40 plus years of trading in the FX markets. It's my hope we can all come away with a better understanding of what moves and drives the FX markets today. Trading FX is exciting. Seven and a half trillion dollars trades each and every day. Well, let's talk about today's markets. Quarter three end is upon us. And the negatives in the marketplace just can't be any larger. We'll start with a potential U.S. government shutdown at the 1st of October. Although the Senate is beginning to do an end run on the House, it still stands to right now as a potential government shutdown, a big negative. Higher rates for longer. Well, that's the mantra throughout the whole world. Oil prices are on the rise. Consumer confidence in the U.S. today dropped to 103 from an expected 105.5. Consumers are moving quickly into assessing the situation of a potential slowdown. What's the result? Dollar higher. And we have the PCE, the Fed's Watched Inflation Index, on Friday. We know inflation is coming down. We know that information and data dependency, Fed, ECB, Bank of England, this information transmits instantaneously as evidenced by your consumer confidence level today. Click. People see what's going on and make these microeconomic adjustments instantaneously. Wake up, central banks. You're not following today's second machine age. Data transmits instantaneously. Well, Let's look around the globe. In Japan, with dollar yen at these levels, the Japanese finance minister Suzuki has come out and said, Japan is at a critical stage, whether to spur consumption and wage growth and reiterated excessive FX moves are not desirable. Watching FX very carefully, with a high sense of urgency. Boom, there goes the flare gun out into the markets. Watch dollar yen. We've been talking about this for weeks now. Japan is at a critical juncture. They still have interest rates at minus 0.1%. That doesn't make sense. I thought we were going to be higher for longer. Okay, that at our conclusion. And then we had the Bank of Japan's Governor Ueda-san saying that moderate rise in inflation backed by wage growth would be a real victory for the central bank. Something is brewing in Japan. With dollar yen at these levels, I'd be careful. Further, Germany's business confidence, business sentiment index, the IFO, fell in September to 85.7 from August 85.8, the fifth in a row decline. Now, some in the European markets are embracing that it only dropped 0.1% as a victory sign that things may be moderating. I don't know about that. New home sales in the United States declined 8.75%, versus the July reading of five uh, of 4.4 uh, gain. Let's look at some of the currencies as I share my screen. We'll jump right into the dollar index. 
As we know, the dollar index has been on a tear since July's low of just below 100. Last week's close was 105.61. We are presently at 106.02. 106.20 has been the high on this move up. I believe now that we've taken out that 106 level, we're presently right on our previous highs. And I always look for those price congestion congestion zones. We're right on top of the previous highs, which gives us good support here. I think we should be looking to target a 108 in the dollar index. However, it must be noted we are overextended, but we cannot look at anything today without looking back because you must know where we've been to know where we're going the quarter two close was 102.92. That was miles lower down in this zone here. 102.51 was the quarter one close. Now, this is why I emphasize location trading points. Had we looked at the close of quarter two at a 102.92, realizing its proximity, to 102.51 quarter one, we could have easily established a more macroeconomic look of positioning and said, well, if we get below a 102, I'll break out of a long. And you would have been in this long-term trending move. Now, that being said, that's why we always look at location trading. The week before was 105.31. A definitive point in the sand right now is 105.61, last week's close. If we trade down into that zone, I look to get long. If we break down, I usually use a 13-point um, discretion. So that means a break of 105.47, 48, and I'm bailing out of that long and flipping short. That's the key that location trading offers us. Jumping into the euro dollar. Well, we blew right through our first objective of 106.34, and we're rapidly approaching our 105.20 second objective level. We're presently at 105.86. Last week's close was 106.48, miles away from us right now. A break higher in the euro, that's a good level to establish a short. The week before was 106.63. So I could say, look to sell a rally. A break of 106.65, 70 level is where you exit and go with a technical correction. Again, we are in a oversold condition. However, quarter two, 109.15. Quarter one, 108.45, miles away. What does that mean when I say miles away? Well, being we're in an oversold condition, being that we're closing in on our second objective, the euro dollar, the dollar index, in fact, most of the currencies we're going to quickly go through, they have a potential of profit taking going in to Friday's close. Why do I highlight that? Because Friday, you have the PCE indicator coming out. This is the inflation indicator that the Fed watches. Certainly a lower reading, and we are expecting a lower reading in general, could put some emphasis on this higher rates for longer. Well, if inflation is coming down, and if you are so data dependent, then wouldn't we say that the present rapid rise of interest rates has worked and that holding rates at these levels is probably, well, get out there in front of the market, Mr. Fed and ECB, and start telling the markets, we've arrived at a level. Let's give some encouragement to the markets before stagflation totally sets in. Sterling, same thing. After that GDP of minus 0 0.5 last week, Sterling has just dropped out of bed. Our, low, our objectives of 124.40, boom, we blew through that level. 123.35 was our second objection, objective. Wow, we took that out. 
And we're right now at 121.75, right on top of, here's where the technical analysis begins to get in. Slice it and dice it however you want. I'm going to give you the simplistic form for you to look at a head and shoulder reverse head and shoulder formation with a neckline coming in. We've broken that at the 123.35 level. And now you've got the shoulder line coming in right here at 121.75. Well, I don't know. Add to your short on a break and look for that objective of 117.75, 118. It would be a quick move. Oversold condition. I get worried coming into the quarter three close of a shift purely based on taking profit. Again, this move has been in place since July. So do you look to take profits as you head into Q4? Amazing that we're already talking Q4. I think that that's a distinct possibility. Now throw into the fact where we are in the dollar yen and the MOF who authorizes intervention we're at 148.85, coming off of the high, 149.18. Remember this high back in October last year where the BOJ stepped in and intervened and knocked the dollar down. How much did they knock it down? Well, from a 152 down to a 129, I'd say that's a pretty substantial move. And that means yellow flags, caution in the wind. Yes, the yen should be weak. Minus 0.1 interest rate. However, if there is some subtle shifting as we begin to get to a point where Japan is feeling as if they've accomplished their goals, they've been fighting deflation for 25 years. We must learn something. Why has Japan kept interest rates in negative territory Despite this inflation pickup, which they immediately term a cost push as a result of the supply side, well, how come the Fed, Bank of England, and the ECB haven't echoed that as well? Somebody's right. Somebody's wrong. I see it as Japan coming out and the rest of the world heading straight for the iceberg of stagflation. Fr prices rising, no growth. That's not going to go over well with the populace. I think that's kind of enough. I will just quickly point out the dollar CAD. We did have a nice objective of the 134.12 level. We hit it. Watch the dollar CAD. It's coming off of an overbought condition. If the dollar begins to turn, this is one you might want to look at, as well as the Aussie dollar, which has just flatlined down at this 64. The figure level, we're at 64.18, and jumping quickly to show the dollar mix, which is still at 11 and a quarter percent. Japan, uh, Mexico is the currency pair that everybody favors, but you notice these rounding bottoms and you notice that you're not getting the same long-term price move to the downside. We're running in a sideways pattern. This could be, watch dollar mix, a break above this 1740 level, we are at 1742, may have some longer term implications in the dollar. And if we are coming into this quarter three close and profit taking is in the wind, this is the one that's moving first. Watch it carefully. Much above the 1743, 44 area. And you could begin to see, remember, when this dollar mix moves, this dollar mix can move three to 5% in a single day. So let's conclude really right now. I throw out there, I believe the central banks keep throwing out this mantra of longer, higher rates for longer. And then they begin to show us what their models are predicting. Do you know, where were your models when there was 0% interest rates and no inflation? Where were the models indicating what we've been going through for this last year, year and a half? They were nowhere. Am I to trust their models today? 
their models are antiquated. They are old. They are worthless right now in this market. Today's markets, as evidenced by your consumer confidence, we change rapidly. Microeconomic changes happen instantaneously. The transmission of data to the marketplace happens automatically. Our central bank should take note and note the same thing. Why do I look what Jamie Dimon from JP Morgan said today? The world is not ready for a Fed going to 7% interest rates, and it will result in stagflation throughout the world. What happens to marketplaces allowing ebbs and flows to take place and to allow the transmission of data, the markets self-correct themselves. What is this obsession by the central banks of hammering down inflation because people want to earn more money and wages go up a little bit because of a market condition created by errors in policy adjustments of our central banks? Anyway, I think that's a little bit of a wrap Let's keep currencies hot. I'll see you on Thursday morning at the same time. Flanagan out.